in the name of Jesus drought in your life that even when it is physical rainy season it is still dry season spiritually financially and otherwise I decree and declare let the rain begin to fall let the rain begin to fall let the rain begin to fall you welcome to another spirit filled message on christocentric message if you're new to this channel i would entreat you to hit on that subscribe button and then to like this video as well i would want you to share this message across because we believe that as this message is coming forth it's going to bless you your graces are going to be imparted onto you and then god is going to visit your home thank you for watching stay blessed Second Kings chapter 8 from verse 7. Elisha came to Damascus and Ben-Hadad the king of Syria was sick. The Bible says it was told him saying the man of God is here. Verse 8. And the king said unto Hazael. Hazael was like an aid to him. Take due present in the hand and go and give the man of God. And inquire of the Lord. He said inquire of the Lord but through the prophetic. Shall I recover from this disease have you seen why kings in ancient times were great because they didn't take chances they took advantage of the prophetic so Hazael went to meet Elisha now and gave him a present even every good thing of Damascus 40 camels burden can you imagine just to inquire of a prophet and he said thy son Ben Hadad king of Syria had sent me to you saying shall i recover from this disease this is where i want you to lend me your attention now pay attention see the power of the prophetic and elisha said unto him go and say to him thou mayest certainly recover but hazael let me tell you the truth i have seen it he shall die he said listen i don't want to break his heart just tell him he shall recover but i will tell you the truth i have seen it as a prophet he shall die now 11 is where my story begins. Elisha now turned down his countenance until he was ashamed and he started crying. After telling Hazael that, Elisha now starts to cry. And Hazael, verse 12, looks at him and he says, My Lord, why are you crying? And he said, Because I have seen the evil that you, Hazael, will bring. You are going to set their strongholds on fire. There are young men you will slay with a sword. You will rip children out of the stomachs of women who are with child. Can you imagine? The prophet was saying, I'm weeping because you, Hazael, as innocent as you look as a messenger now, I have seen by revelation that you will become king and you will be a cruel and a wicked king. I am warning you now. Hear what he said. Hazael, verse 13. Hazael said, but what is your servant a dog? that he shall do this great thing. You see, the prophetic has reached into the future and he said, young man, you are still surrounded with all kinds of poverty and pain. Your loyalty is not genuine. It's just because you are in a condition, you've not been exposed to the delicacy of the palace. I have seen that there is evil in your heart. Instead of the man to say, pray for me, I don't know my tendencies in the future. He said, the Lord has shown me that thou shalt be king over Syria. When you read that story, the life of Hazael had to be cut short because when he became king, he was cruel and he was wicked. Everything Elisha said that he said he would not do, he did. The prophetic can look at an armed robber today and say, don't throw him completely. There is a prophet in him. The prophetic can see a supposed well-behaved gentleman today and say this boy needs counseling say no 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 he's my finest of sons he said you don't know what this gentleman can become the prophetic has a way of reaching to discern the intent in the heart of men that even the careers do not even know is resident within their heart there is almost nothing happening across the nations of the earth that has not been forewarned by scripture and with the lips of prophets some ignored some received Now, the prophetic, sadly, just like the apostolic also, has had its abuses and imbalances because, you see, 
the nature of the prophetic is that because the prophetic appeals to your emotions and your psychology directly everyone wants a sense of security and certainty it's a psychological need so if i prophesy to you right now and i'm, I'm not just declaring i call your name and i tell you tomorrow one billion naira is coming into your account from somebody you see you will be excited and afraid and many other things that by the time that one billion comes tomorrow the next time i say don't travel you will not travel because the memories of the results from the last prophecy this is what has sadly turned many people in the body of christ especially the prophetic community into slaves these are the imbalances that need to be dealt with because the prophetic has a side effect the prophetic commands tremendous loyalty because of the result that it produces and if and when that prophet or the person operating in the prophetic does not fear God sincerely you can turn God's people into animals there are marriages today that have broken because of the prophetic there are children there are people who have gone out of the will of God because they came to honor the prophetic so as much as I talk about the prophetic it should never be ignored but I can tell you there are many biblical requirements that need to be in place before you open up your heart to the prophetic before I receive from you as a prophetic as a prophetic person there are many things I need to look at number one I need to look at the strength of your consecration number two I need to look at your prayer life number three I need to see the supremacy of the Word of God at work in your life if I do not find these things I do not trust your speaking what you say does not have to be inaccurate the margin of error is wide too wide to be received it is not the correctness of what you say that makes you an accurate prophet and it is not the falsehood of what you say that makes you a fake prophet are we together many of us right now sadly have been victims of the prophetic the prophetic is powerful but there are many people who left jobs they should not have left you ask them why did you leave the job he said, a prophet came and told me, you have the call of God, get out of that. Someone will come and say, your wife is a witch. For instance, I'm not being sarcastic. You know I love the body of Christ. And I love the prophetic community too. Imagine as a husband, you go somewhere and someone secretly calls you. And because there's some kind of witchcraft manipulation, maybe in your wife's family, and that person is not sound with the word to be able to discern what he has seen properly. He now says, Oga, you have been staying with a witch in your house. I wish you good luck. Imagine you are such a man, ladies and gentlemen, and you get home and your wife is happy, makes her hair ready to receive you and gives you a big hug and say, honey, I prepared a special meal for you. Uh-huh. Special meal. Everything you hear, you will relate it from the lens of that prophetic. What makes the meal special? What have I not eaten in these 10 years of marriage? You want to kill me? Let me just say it. And you see, fight starts there. There are people who in one day, their entire theology can come to naught because of the presence of the prophetic. We must embrace the prophetic. Some of you here may have been disappointed by the prophetic ministry, but let me tell you the truth. Do not make the mistake that many are making to throw away the prophetic and say it is unnecessary. The prophetic till Jesus comes will play an active role in destiny actualization. However, I must tell you, the prophetic must submit to the supremacy of the word of God because the prophetic, if not managed, especially by individuals who do not have consecration and character, it is going to turn men into beasts. It will cause more havoc than it will cause redemption. Are we together? In Acts chapter 11, we're about to pray. Acts chapter 11 from verse 27. The Bible talks about a very powerful prophet called Agabus. It says, and in these days came prophets from Jerusalem. Came what? Prophets. So in the New Testament, there were prophets, not just one. Came prophets from Jerusalem to Antioch. Verse 28. 
and there stood up one of them called Agabus and signified by the spirit that there will be great famine across the world are you seeing the prophetic now the Bible says which came to pass in the days of Claudius Caesar 29 we're reading to 30 then the disciples every man according to his ability determined to send relief unto the brethren which dwelt in Judea verse 30 now which they also did and sent to the elders by the hands of Barnabas and Saul that means in a meeting like these prophets came to Antioch and one of them called Agabus got up and said listen God has shown me something that there is coming a famine how many prophets across the globe cried and began to warn that there will be recession there will be wars first the prophecy of scripture that when the end time is about to come nations will rise against nation is that true that kingdoms will rise against kingdom it is not new it is in your Bible but the Bible says in Matthew 24 that this is only the beginning of the birth pangs I have said it again no matter what kind of fight happens in the world it is not war that will bring Jesus back there is only one sign that brings Jesus back this gospel of the kingdom shall be preached as a witness to all the nations and then the earth the end will come everything happening today on earth has happened before the thing that was is the thing that is and the thing that is is the thing that is to come there is nothing new under the sun is it famine women ate their children it's not even gotten that bad is it third world nations becoming first world nations is it advanced nations retrogressing is it leaders being corrupt is it corrupt leaders repenting is it national redemption everything we are seeing is already captured in the prophetic dimension of scripture but additionally there have been men and women that God has raised across the globe who have heralded some with uncanny precision the unfolding of events many have been ignored historically men and women have always made it a duty to persecute their saviors there are many men and women of God who have warned many have warned in business in ministry here Agabus warned and said so and so would happen let's see one more prophecy of Agabus Acts 21 from verse 10 and 11 Agabus had the courage to even warn Paul mighty Paul it says as we tarried there many days there came down from Judea again a certain prophet named Agabus 11 the Bible says and when he was come to us he took Paul's girdle and bound his own hands and feet and said thus saith the Holy Ghost so shall the Jews in Jerusalem bind the man that owned this girdle and shall deliver him into the hands of the Gentiles what he said was the truth but Paul said listen I will go through that risk on account of the gospel I am surrounded by a very prophetic community you can imagine when you are connected to people across the globe there will be a deluge of prophetic words day and night streaming from everywhere and it is my duty under God to use the lens of scripture and decipher that which is for my reception and that which I will ignore but it will be the biggest foolishness of anyone even in this end time to throw the baby and the bath water and say I do not need any prophetic word in the midst of all the false prophecies make sure you don't throw the true one that comes as a bailout system hallelujah God has used me to bring prophetic direction to people and to ministries to leaders and to kings I have been directed by myself myself by the privilege of the prophetic I have seen all shades I have seen all dimensions of the prophetic believe me maybe not all but I mean I've seen I've seen I, I mean that I've seen a vast dimension of the prophetic I've had the honor of sitting with people I just returned from Ghana and you know I, I think the Archbishop is probably one of the spiritual leaders on earth that I know 
that has raised about the highest diversity of the prophetic community I know. You see, that is the truth. And so, when I have the opportunity to sit with them like this, usually I would discuss what about the prophetic do I need to learn. And I, I could not imagine through my times, you know, and the relationship with him, the, the level of spiritual orientation I have received alone about the operation of the prophetic. Many people who teach about the prophetic are not prophets. Just because you prophesy does not mean you are a prophet. There is the prophetic office given to a man. Hallelujah. We need to pray for all the prophetic and then by extension the apostolic community in this nation and on earth. Because the prophetic and the apostolic community is much needed. But these are the two groups of people that have received the greatest attack by the devil. The greatest character flaw has come from these two offices. Greatest mismanagement in ministry has come from these two offices. Everyone who is truly called into the apostolic and the prophetic demands and desires your prayer, including the person speaking to you. You have no idea of the attack that is schemed at the prophetic and the apostolic because of the sensitive nature of the assignment. Hallelujah. We need the prophetic. God has called you to be a prophet here. Your first assignment is to be careful. Don't go around harassing people with your limited knowledge. There are people who come to church and when everybody is seated, they start moving from row to row. You are Sarah. No, 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 I'm Grace. Say, well, one day you'll be called Sarah. That's what I mean. You are a liar. You are lying there. Instead of you to repent and go back and retrain yourself, it doesn't mean you are false. All kinds of gimmicks and games. If you are not hearing, you are not hearing. You can grow. Are we together? Or those who go to families and harass people. You just knock the door, peace be unto this house. And you say, well, I've been instructed to come and pray with you and have a vigil. You have all kinds of problems and you start harassing people. One of the biggest mistakes of the prophetic is mammon. 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 You mix the prophetic and money, you are going to destroy yourself. Maybe God is speaking to someone here. There is wealth with the prophetic, but not by manipulation. The moment you start asking people, bring money, bring this, bring that, bring money so that I will see for you, so that I will hear for you, it's just by the mercy of God. Now, please don't go around condemning people. Remember, both good and bad, we are all growing. God is helping us. So this is not for you to carry tonight's message as a weapon. And go and say, as you are talking now, I already know the person I will call. And you go and call somebody and say, listen, now you have been deceiving me. Bring all my money, all the money, 11 million in all. Return one by one. That's not what I'm teaching you. But you must be very careful. The prophetic, we must restore the accuracy of priesthood and the sanctity of priesthood. Are we together? There is nothing wrong in blessing a man of God, sowing into a man of God's life. There is nothing wrong with a man of God challenging you to give, provided it's within the boundary of integrity. The moment you start playing games and you start scheming and now start adding a lot of prophetic manipulations, and then one of the, the corruptions of the prophetic is employing extra-biblical practices alongside the prophetic, even if authentic. This is one of the things that has downplayed the purity of the prophetic. Again, like I said, when I teach, I teach from a standpoint of love. It is only God that knows what he has told people. It's not my assignment to condemn, but it's my assignment to bring God's people to order using the reference of doctrine. Are we together now? Yes. There is no amount of prophecy you will receive that has not had its parallel in scripture. Nations were prophesied to by a man and in 24 hours things change. So by the time people start sending you to do all kinds of things, you know, I don't want to start mentioning, you know the things that I'm talking about. There has to be a lot of care and caution. Now there are prophetic signs. There are prophetic tokens. Yes, it is very possible. Jesus washed, put mud in the eyes of someone and said, go to Siloam and wash. 
an angel came and stirred the water in Bethesda. I understand these things. But there is a way that you operate that it is outside of the jurisdiction of scripture. You are going to lead people into perdition. Hallelujah. But as far as the leadings of God is concerned, I'm praying even this night that God will raise a caliber, a new generation of prophets in Nigeria and Africa that will be a correction of the mistakes past in the name of Jesus Christ. Most of the apostolic and the prophetic community, I say again, the challenge is usually lack of character, mammon, pride. In many parts of Africa, the crop of prophets that is just a, a, a product, is, is almost a mess. It's not even something to talk about, sincerely. And many are gifted genuinely in terms of the gifting, my goodness. But as beautiful as the gift is, it comes with such an ugly life and a, dispos a disposition that it cancels out the beauty and the purity. The prophetic, the gift will attract people to you. It is your character and stability based on scripture that now glorifies Jesus. Are we together? By the time I prophesy to you and you say, oh, man of God, that's true. You have a company like this. I say, yes, you earned 150 million this month. Yes, sir. How did you know? I say, now, now that I've seen that amount, you will be mistaken to think that prophecy, that prophecy will finish with just telling you that amount. Go and carry 30 million if you don't want to die. Rush with it and stand in front of my office tomorrow. You just bought a Jeep. Yes, sir. How many? Three. Carry two. First to my house. You have 10 houses. Yes. What are you doing with 10 houses? Oh, God just said I should build. Did he tell you one is for you? No, all those kinds of things. I'm not being sarcastic, but we need to repent. When I say we, I add myself in it. Whether you are innocent or not, when you are addressing the body of Christ, you must include yourself in it too. You don't stand from a standpoint of self-righteousness and say we, and say them. Mm -mm. I don't do tell them. If one fails, all of us failed. If one succeeds, all of us succeeded. Are we together? But ladies and gentlemen, please hear me. It is my prayer that through you or around you, that God will send authentic prophetic voices. Haven't told you some of these negative parts of the prophetic, I submit to you by God. The day you are privileged to have access to the accurate and accurate prophetic office, balanced with scripture, with character, accuracy in hearing, you will, a, your lifetime can be downloaded in a moment and you will get up, with, you will start running like the foxes of Samson. You will now know that the reason why you have been marking time is because of lack of hearing. There are people who have, who have achieved so much in destiny in one year than many have done within two decades because the prophetic, God used the prophetic to give them wisdom. As much as I prophesy to people, I am a very principal beneficiary of the prophetic. You see, my coming to Abuja, in addition to what God told me, God used a lot of prophets and some of them with precision I cannot begin to tell you. With accuracy and precision, almost every new season of my life that is about to unfold, there has to be one prophet across the globe somewhere, maybe connected by relationship or even total strangers that God reveals to them. And some of them come with the sincerity of heart and bring that word and it just opens up doors. The steps of a good man are ordered by the Lord. Koinonia, please hear me. This end time demands sensitivity in understanding the leadings of the Spirit. If you really want to actualize destiny. For some of us, after this service, 
you need to use this week to at least have a one day retreat and say Lord the way business is not working for me speak to me what am I not doing well what am I not getting well or are you even in this in the first place when you call on him he will answer if God has helped you here to be a man of God or to be a prophet, please, I beseech you by the message of God. If you don't have an answer to people's problems, be secured enough to give them intelligence from scripture. But don't be under pressure to tell lies. There are many times people come to meet me and say, Apostle, I know. And you know, those are the kinds of statements that now massage your ego and you are now tempted to lie. Apostle, I, I traveled all the way from America I'm here right now and I knew the moment I see you one word uh-huh and you now say okay um, now that you have you have encouraged me like that how in the world do I tell you I will go and think about it and that is why even genuine people I hope you know lying is not falsehood it's just sin many accurate prophets have lied the same way Many false prophets have told the truth. Hallelujah. We don't lie because we are false. We lie because we are human. He said God is not a man that he should lie. When they met Balaam, remember that? Let's not go there. Let me just talk about something else. Let me encourage maybe servants of God who are following or those who are here. Please do not be under any pressure to tell lies. If it is something you need to pray about, you can tell the people, please give me some time and let me pray. You may need to consult like doctors do. You see, the doctor will say, okay, allow me. This is new. In my 35 years of practice, I've not seen it like this. Let me call another colleague in India or another colleague somewhere and just send the samples and let's look at it and compare notes. But it's only men of God who are proud. We are know it all. We sit down and die and tell lies rather than just opening your heart to say, listen, I, I may not have clarity about this issue, but let another person speak. Hallelujah. People have lied about election. People have lied about, about uh, the economics. People have lied about so many things. We need to be very careful and not get under pressure. But let me encourage you, do not be a slave to the prophetic. Open up your heart to receive the prophetic within the jurisdiction of its relevance. But hear me, this is what will keep you to the end. The voice of a prophet, no matter how accurate. I hope you know there are many things God said in the Bible that did not come to pass. It does not make, make God a fake prophet. Many, many things he said would come to pass. For instance, it is his desire that all men get saved. Are all men saved? There are people going to hell every day. Is that true? The Lord is my shepherd. We have come thus far by the leadings of the Spirit. I cannot begin to give you instances of the leadings of the Spirit. It's December now, and one of the things I hope to teach you before this year wraps up is the power of retreats. Most of us do not know how to hear a word from the Lord and then to run with it. It is risky to just celebrate Christmas alone. Beautiful Christmas tree, by the way. Let's appreciate our lovely people and the flowers here. Hallelujah. But if all you are thinking about is just celebrating Christmas, eating chicken, cow, and running around, going to visit friends, family, that is wonderful. But there must be something within your heart to say, Lord, I need your leadership. Guide me. I am tired of making mistakes in my life. For someone God is speaking to you, people will not continue to forgive your mistakes forever. There are mistakes you are going to make that may cost you your relevance for the rest of your life. And God himself is calling on you right now. And he's telling you, 
it is time there are levels in life these people are keeping the christmas tree instead of them to focus on what we are discussing we just commented the, the tree it doesn't mean that um, are we together you flog it out with destiny lord i need your leadings i made certain mistakes before i got married you may say but now i have five children i cannot afford that mistake again because while i suffered alone now there are five people there i made certain mistakes we were 10 in ministry but right now is a ministry with branches all over the world i cannot afford that mistake again listen to me stagnation mistakes unnecessary errors can be eroded in your life if you understand the leadings of the spirit the meek will he guide in judgment there are fathers here who need to just go and sit with your family and say let's pray even though I'm the head of this home I confess I do not have all the answers we need to go to the one who is the fountain of wisdom and to hear him speak to us there are leaders who need to retreat and say, listen, even though we are great leaders, we do not have all the answers. We need to go back and trust God to speak to us. Hallelujah. Oh God, you are my God. And I will ever love you. Oh God, you are my God, and I will ever praise you. Oh God, you are my God, and I will ever follow. I will seek you. It will take beyond being a listener to receive the leadings of the shepherd you see when Jesus came in the New Testament he said I am the good shepherd a shepherd leads sheep and if you know anything about sheep sheep does not have horns they don't have any external system of defense the only defense of the sheep is the leadership and the security that the shepherd provides that means when the shepherd is not there, the sheep is exposed to wolves, exposed to lions, and all kinds of wild animals. Listen to me. It is a dangerous thing to sojourn this earth just using intellect, using brain work. Your mind is important, your brain is important. But the Bible, history, and experience have shown that any man who sojourns this complicated destiny not paying attention to the leadings of God will eventually end up in catastrophe. 
Many began their work arrogantly and even began to clap for themselves before the journey started. Today, many of them have had their heads bent in shame because they've had to learn by pain and by experience that when God does not lead you, you will go nowhere, even if you think you are moving forward. It is by you that I run through a troop. It is by you that I leap over a wall. God is speaking to someone. The sun will no more give you sunlight by day. The moon will no more give you moonlight by night. Jehovah will be your everlasting light. He'll be your glory, your strength and your sight. first prayer point tonight is to declare Lord I am a follower I confess that I cannot lead myself I have attempted to lead myself in politics I have attempted to lead myself in marriage I have attempted to lead myself in business I have attempted to lead myself even in my spiritual sojourn I have attempted to lead myself in ministry is someone praying but I return to you oh captain and guardian of my soul Someone is praying. I make up my mind that beyond a listener, I am a follower. Follower of the leadings of the Spirit. Someone is praying. If I had followed you 20 years ago, I would not be where I am now. For there is a way that seemed right unto a man. The Bible says the end thereof are the ways of death. Some of you have followed friends and associations. Some of you have followed the, the, the philosophies of men. Some of you have followed your ego. Some of you have followed the path of ignorance. But the shepherd is calling you tonight. I am ever willing to lead you. Someone is praying. Pray from the depth of your heart. I make a commitment, oh God, that I will be a follower. I will follow your leadings. I am tired of rigmaroling around the corridors of destiny. It's time for me to make constructive advance spiritually, maritally, financially, ministerially, professionally in my career. Is someone praying? Man of God, pray. Businessman, pray. Family man, pray. Professional, pray. The continuity and the excelling of your destiny depends, depends, depends on the leadings of the Spirit. Hallelujah. Dearly beloved, I hope you were blessed by this message. Do not keep the video to yourself. Share to as many as you can to help them bless. Check our homepage for more of our messages. Subscribe to the channel. Comment on it. Like it. See you on our next video. Bye. Pray. Pray. Pray for your destiny. Salaska de Baska Nakata Branda Katekatos Kate Branda Katapa Kotosko to break a take a legata. The phase of development. Lord, grant me the discipline.